How was your uh, trip home? It was good. Um, very productive. Uh, was able to meet with the president. Was able to see some family members I haven't seen in years, cousins and aunts. Um, it was almost restoring their faith because we've, we've, we haven't had any contacts with one another and they tell other people, oh, you know, that's our nephew, that's our cousins, and they say, well, if, if that's your cousin, nephew, how, how come you're living in this condition? And people didn't believe them and just to pop up on them the way I did, you know, they, they were rejoicing and, you know, thanking God. And, so it was really pleasing. You were, what, nine? I think you told what you said when you left, or? I left 92. Um, I got to this country in 94, but we left around 92 to, to get to the Ivory Coast at the time. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Tom, what, what inspired you to do this now? Um, sometimes I'm, I'm very sporadic. I, sometimes I just get up and do things. and. Uh, I've been traveling. I love traveling, and uh, been around. Uh, the year before, I, I went around, uh, went to Dubai, Tokyo. You know, saw the country a little bit, the world a little bit. And um, this year, after a few uh, trips, I just thought, you know, maybe I go back home because the Chiefs gave me some time off because uh, I've been rehabbing. And I said maybe I go home for a few days and and just see how the country is and and, and be there in the physical just just to see, because I haven't been back in it. And then when I got there, I was able to do way much more than I anticipated. What was your biggest surprise, or the, the biggest sort of takeaway from, from, from being there? What, what, what stays with you that you hadn't thought of? Uh, there's roads. We got, you know, before it was all dusty type of roads. Now we have, you know, real roads that can get you to places. Where, uh, where I live is about, about three hours on a real good road, but it'll take you six hours before with the type of roads we used to have. What goes through your head when you see your former house and then we follow along on social media, you can see the house you grew up in. What's going through your mind when you kind of see that and, and then and get, get to go back there? Well, it's just, man, you, you, it's still standing, you know, with all the, the war and everything that's happened, it's still there. And, and you know, you remember where, where I used to take my bath on the side of the house and where I was at the time when the fighting start started and you saw, you know, it, it was just, it was reminiscent, it's, you know, it was, it felt good and as, especially having the people that's related to me there to also, you know, be able to remember what I remember. So it's it's not like I'm making it up. So they remember when I remember, they remember. So we were kind of like, you know, reminiscing the entire time. But it, it, it felt good, you know. They're living, I'm living, and it felt good. Do you ever think about if you hadn't gotten away, what your life, how different your life would have been like? Uh, yeah, I always remember I always wanted to join the fighting. You know, I, I, I wanted to do that because I was a child and everyone was doing it. and. My brother wouldn't let me. Um, he did. He did it for a little bit, but he wouldn't let me. But I may be dead. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think I would be living. I don't really see how life would be if I would have stayed and fought. Because there's all the people I knew as friends. They're dead. Tom, just to be clear, when did you get there and when did you come back? Oh, so I left on a Friday of last week. I got there on a Saturday at 4, and then I left on a Wednesday and got back here on a Thursday at 7 at night. When you got there, like, what kind of, how much love did you get, you know, from people? Like, what was that like, man? Well, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's different. Like, the people didn't know me there. You would think like they knew football. They didn't really know who I was there, and um, so we hit the radio station for about three hours, a couple of TV stations. But some people knew about me, but they didn't know, you know, who you know. So the love at first it was cool. Like once people started to know, oh, this is this guy plays in in the U.S. He plays football, and they associate that with soccer. And then once they start to kind of come along a little bit. Oh, they read and see some highlights because they all have little phones. Then they start realizing I played a little basketball uh, with one of uh, the security guards that was carrying me around in his neighborhood, and 
you know, we had a huge surrounding. A lot of people came around. We went swimming on the beach. A lot of people was just following us uh, in his neighborhood. Um, but as far as the awareness of who I am in the, uh, as far as the sport goes, no, there wasn't that, you know. How much work had to go into planning this trip, you know? And, like, I can only imagine that, you know, you got to take a call. Like, I'm just curious, how much work? Not went much. To, really? um, the way I work, I, I, you know, <laughs> I, not much, you know. I'm not, I don't sit down and there, there are people that are gifted in that way. If, if, it, if it is a trip that I feel like that needs that, then I will do it, um, but I don't plan that way. I, you know, I got up and I called my dad. Hey, dad, I, you know, I want to go to Liberia. You want to come? And <laughs> he's like, sure, you know, and it worked out because he had a whole week off from school. And uh, I called my brother. He said, yeah, let's do it. And we, we, before doing it, though, I spoke with my agent. Their concerns you know, they had concerns. We reached out to Secret Service people because there was kidnapping, a disease, and, you know, we don't, you know, just stories made up. And for me, I, I, I was just, I was more interested in going. I'm like, well, if I'm going to go back home and, and this is where I died, then it would just be, that would be a great story. I mean, but, you know, I wasn't as worried as they were. As to, but when you read what they sent um, the Secret Service people sent, and when you read that, you, you kind of become wary of, uh, maybe I shouldn't go, maybe I shouldn't, you know, this is not wise, and, you know, and your agents keep telling you, like, you got two kids, you know, you don't want to do this, you know, you got a family now, I, you know, I, I said, no, I can't be afraid to go back home, that's where I'm from, and we just went. Were you ever concerned? Was there ever a moment you were concerned, or anything happened that gave you pause? I did, yeah, I did. After reading that, that report. Well, I mean, actually, when you were actually there. Um, right? After the radio station, because we spent, we're supposed to spend 45 minutes. We, was there, we was on the radio for about three hours. Um, then there are people standing outside, and then I was like, uh, I don't know, because it now it's nighttime. So that was the only time I felt a little wary. And then there are people claiming they were family. Then they were outside, and that's when I was wary. But then there wasn't, a, we, you know, these guys did a great job. The security I had with me, um, they got me, got in the car, and we're gone. And um, so, not, not like, like that, but just one time. You plan to go back anytime soon, or you won't know that till a day or two before you go? Um, <laughs> well, I got to plan that. Um, I have to plan that. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'll make it there this year. I'd love to. I'd love to before before I get back into hard training. Um, I want to get some things done there, but I'm not in a rush. But I will be going back uh, next year for no, sure. I mean, I'm sorry. Get, get what done? Like, what would you like to get? Uh, well, I want to bring awareness to the country. Um, we. I have to sit down with uh, uh, my agents. Uh, I want to form. A, I don't formally have a um, foundation. And everything I do, as far as giving, I just I just do. I don't, you know, want to bring awareness uh, to myself because of whatever reasons. But with the country I'm from, there, there, there's needs. There's things that the country needs, and I think people can help. But if people don't know, they they just can't do it. So I think uh, I could be a great ambassador for our country back there. Tom, you, you talked about the changes in, in infrastructure since you had to leave your homeland. Politically, have you noticed any kind of difference, and, and not just in your homeland, but I mean some of the other countries of, of Africa, such as the, the, the Sudans and, and mm -hmm. Tanzanias and so forth? Well, I don't follow too much from a political standpoint, but for, as far as I know, I, I, you know, what I know of, of the president, I, I've heard she's done a good enough job. Uh, the, if you get there and see how the country is, you have to say she has done a good good enough job. Um, I, I, politics, I, I try, you know, Coach says stay, stay away from politics. That's, <laughs> that's not my area of expertise, but um, um, that's not... Uh, I didn't see anything different. I, I believe they're doing a good enough job in Liberia, and and uh, my job there is isn't isn't to raise awareness of what's happening with the government, but more with what's happening within the country and how people can help 
the country. Can we ask you a little bit about football, too? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how's your rehab been? It's been going well. Um, I, I feel uh, I was able to do more today than I, I've done the entire time of rehabbing, and <clears throat> the time they gave me off, I think, helped um, because, you know, the knee is is unstable and with the scope it's still sore and then it gave me about two weeks off I'm, I, I came back and I was able to run on it and um, so I, I think I'm progressing the way I, I, I would like. Is there still pain in it? Or? Yeah I mean it's always it's pain around my body so. <laughs> uh, with regard to that how, how do you weigh how much longer to play what, what do you take into consideration you have all important other interests too how, how do you how do you evaluate that every year? Um, I always say if I can give myself a a chance to compete at a high level and if I can still play at that level if I can't play at that level then there's no there's no need to play football and that's comparing it to these young guys that are coming in the league um cuz it's a young man's league and so every year it's based on me being healthy enough and me being able to play and move as fast as these guys and, and being in shape, um, which is the toughest part of our game. If you're not in shape, you just, you're not going to last. How much do you weigh what you're going to feel like well, in 20 I, I'm, years? I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> Tom, but you, you talked about this being a young, a young man's league. Um, in, in what ways do you feel like the, the rookies that this team drafts are, are going to have to, to step up defensively and, and help this, this team go to another level? Uh, it's important. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the guys we bring in this year should definitely put us where we need to go. Um, as, as you can see, uh, the organization does a great job with drafting, and we, we saw that last year with the the corner, uh, Marcus Peters. Uh, he changed the entire defense. You have to say that. Now, um, the way he played, uh, just off the charts. I mean, you had to put him up there with the, the, the ones that that play that position in the top three. I mean, he he did better than most corners do, does in this league. And that was just his first year. So with these guys coming in, they have to understand our mindset here. Uh, we're not waiting to get anything done. We feel like uh, our coaches have, the organization have put together a, a great team. And right now, it, it's right now. And, it, and the slogan is, it's time. You know, last year was raise the level. Now it's time. We don't have no time to wait to put together something. No, we have to do it right now. So these guys come in, they have to understand that's our mindset. I just said last year that you guys didn't treat Marcus like a rookie. He didn't come in and act like a rookie when he first started. Just his year too, just what are the expectations for him in being you know, one of the guys to go out there now that Sean has left to go over to Oakland, just the expectations for him from a leadership standpoint? Um, I mean, Marcus just got to be himself. Uh, we're not we're not looking for him to do anything any spectacular or act a certain way. Um, that's that's what coach preach. Just be yourself. And let your personality show, and, and that's all we expect from him. And you know, playing good football, and that's what is, is expected from everyone here. A couple more guys. Tommy, you've been here a long time. This is going to be the first time you're coming back after a playoff win. What changes now that you got that win under your belt? Um. I think the guys understand what it takes to get there, and, and after getting that win, they realize that once we, we're in, we can get the job done. And it's only a, a month left of football, and you have to really dedicate that month to football and, and nothing else. And uh, I think they believe. I think our guys believe that we can get this done, and and, the, and guys are excited, and, and they understand what's at stake, and. It's a challenge, and we all look forward to it. And it wouldn't be right if it wasn't a challenge. And you know, playing 24 games in the year, uh, New England does it probably every year for the past 10 years. And you know, we we have to be able to get that done here with with our organization. We'll go Herbie and then Adam, and then we'll be done. Tom, you and Justin Houston are pretty tight. How often have you stayed in touch with him this off season? And do you get the sense that he will be coming back at some point this season? Uh, I hope he does. I mean, we all we're all here, and uh, this is not mandatory. Um, um, so I mean, I hope he does. I mean, our hope is everybody's here, and I can't tell you whether he'll be here or, or not. Um, Coach always want to focus on the guys that are here.
but we hope for Justin to be here. Last one, Tom, um, we talked to you when you signed the new contract, and it sounded like you were kind of preparing yourself for a little bit of a reduced role maybe this year. But that was before the, the news about Justin came out, although you maybe knew at the time. Do you still feel that way with, with the uncertainty about when he's going to be coming back? Are you still maybe looking at a little bit of a lesser role than you normally play, or do you feel like it's well, going to be a, a, like, like it's been? See, I, I'm a competitor, so... I'm going to put myself in the best shape and, and want to compete. Um, I have to leave it up to our coaches and the staff to make the decision how much they would like for me to play and how, how, how less if, if they don't. Um, um, but being here, coach have monitored how much I play. I mean, there are games that I could have stayed in and got sacks. Be, and, I mean, but I didn't because coach didn't feel that it, that was what that's what's important. Uh, we, when we're winning, he feels like, well, you know, you, you don't need to play. When we're in tight games, he feels like, well, you need to be on the field. So I leave that up to coach. But I, I, my job is to put myself in a position to compete. So I leave it up to coach whether they play me more or not.